Today I'll be speaking about the construction of contactors and the effects of faulty shading coils. Here we have a three pole industrial contactor. The number of poles refers to the number of power contacts the contactor has. So there'll be a set of contacts between line one and T1, between L2 and T2, and L3 and T3. Also notice there's a set of auxiliary contacts numbered 13 and 14. These can be used as holding or seal-in contacts. Now that we've had a look at the outside of the contactor, let's open it up and see what's on the inside. First thing we notice is a contact spring. This contact spring will open the contacts when the coil has been de-energized. Next, we'll take a look at the armature. This movable armature piece is constructed in such a way to prevent both eddy currents and hysteresis losses. Here you can see the laminations built into the armature piece. These laminations are what prevents eddy currents. And then you'll notice the armature piece has been made of a soft silicon steel. This type of metal helps to prevent hysteresis losses. When the coil is energized, the armature is pulled towards the core, closing the contacts of the contactor. So this is where we have our movable armature piece. When the coil is energized, the armature piece is pulled towards the core, closing a set of contacts. Then we have the coil. The coil is rated for 120 volt. There we go, 120 volts. When an electrical voltage is applied across the coil, a magnetic field is created, pulling the armature piece toward. And now we can see the stationary armature piece, the core. The core is also constructed in a manner to prevent eddy currents and hysteresis losses. Once again, noticing the laminations. We also can see two shading coils embedded into the pole faces of the armature piece. The shading poles prevent chattering at the contact face caused by an AC voltage. Remember that the magnitude of the AC sine wave is at zero 120 times a second. During those moments, the contact spring will force the contacts open. Shading coils prevent AC chatter by creating a secondary magnetic field in the pole face of the armature. This residual magnetism maintains the contacts in the closed position, preventing undesirable chattering of the contact faces. Now, let's reassemble the contactor and observe its correct operation. As we can see, the contactor operates normally. Now let's disassemble it and replace the shading coil with one that's faulty. Okay, so here you can see, I'll be replacing this shading coil with a shading coil that has been broken. Now that the shading coil is no longer a continuous piece of metal, it will not maintain any type of residual magnetism. Without this residual magnetism, we will notice the effects of AC chatter on this coil and contactor. So let's reassemble the contactor and observe the effects of a faulty shading coil.
That loud chattering that you just heard is the actual contacts opening and closing 120 times a second as the AC sine wave travels through zero. This chattering can cause heating and excessive damage to the contact pole faces, eventually leading to contact failure. Hopefully now you can see the difference that a shading coil makes in the construction of an AC contactor. Thank you.